All right, grab your photosynthesis part two notes and make sure that you're writing notes on the, your, you know, the Word document, your paper that's printed out so that I can tell you you're taking notes. Okay, so photosynthesis. Let's talk about the word for a second. Okay, so here we have photo. We'll make it a little thicker than that. Okay, so the word actually tells you the meaning of it. Look closely at the word, and it's, it's actually broken up into two parts. Photo, which means light, and synthesis, which means to make. Okay, so watch this. If photo means light, and synthesis means to make, that's what the word means. If you if you if you add to the sentence use light to make sugar. The whole purpose of photosynthesis is to use light to make sugar. So light to make sugar. That's the purpose of photosynthesis. Okay, the photosynthesis is broken up into two parts. You got it. You got to figure it out. Photosynthesis is broken up into two parts. The light reaction is the first part. And the Calvin cycle where you make sugar is the second part. So the first step of photosynthesis is called the light reaction. The second step of photosynthesis is called the Calvin cycle. And that's where you make the sugar. So sugar is made in the Calvin cycle. Well, today's lecture, which is... Photosynthesis part two is all about the light reaction. So the first part of photosynthesis. Okay, it tells you in your notes, this process is converting sunlight energy into usable chemical energy. Okay, so you'll notice right here, it's kind of small, but do you see right here on this picture, light coming in? Okay, so light comes in to the thylakoids. And look at, if you look at this picture right here, look up at this picture. Light comes into the thylakoids, and that makes ATP, which is right here, ATP, and that makes NADPH, which is right there. So it says converting sunlight into usable energy. So the light reaction, I actually want you to write this in. The light reaction uses sunlight and makes ATP and NADPH. Okay, so ATP and NADPH are cellular energy. So it takes in solar energy, it takes solar energy, and converts it into cellular energy. Cellular energy being ATP and NADPH. So solar energy and converts it into cellular energy. Cellular energy is ATP and NADPH. Okay, these two parts are occurring in the presence of sunlight in the thylakoid membrane. So this is happening. What you, what you see, this picture is in the thylakoid. And then do you see where it says there are thousands of photosystems? in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so I want you to define photosystem. A photosystem is a protein that absorbs sunlight. A protein that absorbs sunlight. A protein that absorbs sunlight. Okay, so step one. Sunlight hits the thylakoid. So sunlight hits the thylakoid, splits water, the water's in the stroma, and this hits the photosystems. Okay, so sunlight goes into the plant and it splits the water. Okay, so imagine that there is a water molecule. So this, okay, this right here is a thylakoid. This right here is a thylakoid. 
Okay, so the first thing that's happening right here in this thylakoid is that sunlight splits the water and then electrons from water go down the electron transport chain. So I'm going to make these electrons yellow because that's what they are in the video too. I'm in the picture too. So you can see electrons going down. So electrons go down the electron transport chain. So see the electrons. And the electrons came from water. So they're hydrogen electrons. They're hydrogen electrons coming from water. So these electrons, look at the yellow marker. Come on, look at it. The electrons go down the electron transport chain and they bind to NAD. PH and make in and they bind to NADP plus and make NADPH. So you remember from last night's video, I told you that NADP plus is an empty electron molecule. When it's full, it's NADPH. So the electron from water binds with NADP plus. Okay. In the meantime. Hydrogen, look at the pink line, and so I'm going to draw some more pink lines. In the meantime, hydrogens come, hydrogen protons come into the thylakoid membrane. So a bunch of hydrogens go into the thylakoid membrane, almost like a balloon. There's hydrogen molecules building up, and it pumps those hydrogens in. Do you see in your notes on step two where it says the proton pumps and that is on, under number one, it says that is active transport. So the hydrogens are pumped in and that's active transport. Okay, it tells you in your notes that this builds up a concentration of hydrogens. Okay, so read with me. It says under P680, that's the first photosystem. It says free energy of electrons is used to actively transport hydrogen protons, see the hydrogen protons, into the thylakoid space. The hydrogen goes down in the stroma. Okay, so it says this is a concentration gradient. So a concentration gradient is created. So right out beside concentration gradient, lots of hydrogens or many hydrogen protons. Okay, so that's, that's going to be a lot of hydrogens in there, like a blown up balloon. And do you see in your notes where it says P680 and P700? All that is, and I'm going to erase everything real quick. All that is, look, this one, it says photosystem 2. So this little purple square right here, it's now red, but it was purple, is photosystem 2. And this one is photosystem 1. I know, I know what you're thinking. That doesn't make sense. Photosystem 1 should come first, but they're named in the order that they were discovered. So photosystem 1 was just discovered first. So photosystem 2 and then photosystem 1. Okay, so photosystem 2, that P680, all that means is that it absorbs the sunlight of a 680 wavelength. That's all. And this P700 absorbs that sunlight. So, But really what I want you to know is just that they both absorb sunlight. So don't focus on the wavelength size. So both of these absorb sunlight. Both of these absorb sunlight. And they split water. Water is split. Right there. Okay, so that's what we call non-cyclic flow. Non-cyclic where it doesn't make a circle. Cyclic flow, okay, watch this. Watch, I'm going to go with yellow again. Is where sunlight hits right here. Hits photosystem 1. Do you see where it says cyclic? So where it says P700, I want you to write in photosystem 1. So at photosystem 1, sunlight hits photosystem 1, and the electron just goes down and then comes right back to P to, it says P700. So P700 loses two excited electrons, but they return. So right underneath this, under cyclic electron flow, makes a cycle. Okay, and this is going to make ATP. Okay, so you have cyclic flow there. Those high, okay, so now we're moving on to step three. Those hydrogen 
molecules. Okay, so focus now on the hydrogens on the inside. Hydrogen ions on the inside right here flow through ATP synthase and they make ATP. The hydrogens flow through, look at the word, ATP, ATP, synthase. You should know exactly what that is. It is, watch this, it is an enzyme that makes ATP. ATP synthase is an enzyme, you want to write that in, enzyme that makes ATP. So the hydrogen ions go through ATP synthase, and ATP synthase turns, ATP synthase turns, and poof, it makes ATP. And so underline makes large amounts of ATP when ATP synthase turns. Okay, this is an example of where two sources of energy work together, which is called energy coupling. Two sources of energy called energy coupling. So you can see in this picture the hydrogen ion going through ATP synthase. The first process was active transport and that was the hydrogens being pumped. So this part right here was active transport. And then when the hydrogens flow through it's passive transport. Okay, when the kinetic movement of those hydrogens is called chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis is when ATP synthase turns. So write that in. Chemiosmosis is when ATP synthase turns. In the end, circle, circle, circle. ATP and NADPH are made. ATP and NADPH are made. Okay, so just to sum up the light reaction, make sure you got this. Just to sum up the light reaction right here. Sunlight comes in. Sunlight comes in. Splits the water. Electrons go through the electron transport chain. This was the electron transport chain. All of this. All of this is the electron transport chain. So electrons go through. As electrons go through, ooh, as electrons go through the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions turn ATP synthase, and that makes ATP. All right, I hope this was helpful. And I know this was a hard lecture, so we're going to do it again tomorrow in class. So don't be worried.